Hey guys, how's your day coming? I just want to say right now there's either two ways you can play this set. Right now you can play this set either one of two ways, right? So the first is either you play reroll. This is reroll Kale, this is reroll Tristana, this is reroll Zed. I mean, reroll invokers, you could probably play that every game because nobody goes ass shit. Um. You know, and then the other way to play it is either you rock Aurelian Soul, the hero augment, and you just go fast level 9. You, you don't give a fuck about your HP. You try to present the best board as you can, you know, and then you just take all three XP augments that it gives you. You push level 9 as quick as you possibly can, and then try to make the best max cab board you can. In my opinion, right now, that is Shen with Karma, Ari. That's the trifecta that you need. And then, you know, you could have Tarek out there to get Sorcerer on the Ari. And then um, have the Bastion as well. And work on whatever other legendaries you can, right? That's the game plan right now, in my opinion. In this game, I, and I've said this before, if you guys want to play mutants, I think you should only play mutants if you get the emblem. And as you can see here, when I take this XP augment with um, Aurelian Soul, I always try to open up like lose streaking, going for a five streak in the early game. Because one, you take like negligible losses, you get a free econ like boost, and you gain more XP per loss than you do win with this hero augment, right? So just something to think about, guys. Another thing, I might post another video here pretty soon. I actually think Gunner is coming back, but it's not um, Gunner in the stereotypical sense. I mean, it's Gunner in terms of you're going for Jinx three-star reroll with like four Zon, and you are basically making Jinx completely juiced, especially if you get the Zon upgrade of like bonus attack damage above 50 health, or the one that's like the robotic arm, which everyone double triggers, right? In this case, we're just playing some standard mutants. We're going to be trying to lose streak, but we won here in this case. And we found the Callista, so we can slam a Rage Blade. We know we can transition this item over to Kaisa. And what Callista is in the early game, is she's an HP saver, right? Especially in this set, where she's just usually able to rend a unit or two and just make sure you get those kills off on the board so you're not losing a whole ton of HP. When you do play mutants though, guys, I'd really recommend I haven't tried it out too much, but there might be something to say about playing the Earth Hero Augment and trying to force mutants every single game. Because if you do get this emblem, I would like to see my win-loss percentage with just mutants. Because whenever I get this emblem, I always top four. Because I think Baron just absolutely cracked. I also think the little um, Voidling that you spawn hard, hard stabilizes you. And the good part about it is it allows you to kind of go whatever direction you want in the game. Like you can go into four Sorks, into going into Strategist and pivot into Azir. You can go Rek'Sai 3 reroll into like a full Brawler front line. You can go into Kais, into Challengers, into high, legend, uh, high Legendaries. You're not, like, really railroading yourself, right? And I think for the Tome to work, guys, you need five active traits and to do a combat for it to trigger and work. And then you're able to pop the Tome. I don't know if I just YOLO it here or not, but that's usually what I'd recommend you do. So 
So as usual, usually around three, two, you guys are gonna wanna be level six. And see, we didn't even get the Rift Herald Tome here. I don't know how much you guys are enjoying this set. I already hit Masters. You know, I'm kind of making it a note to myself to go for Challenger. That way I can um, put out a video saying I hit Challenger or something like that. But I really don't find this to be the most exciting set right now. waiting a second right before the combat pops that way we can power level up and the other person will know if we're going to power level or not and this is all in the attempt to keep our streak right the streak is essentially 30 gold interest we don't want to just give this up just to give this up And a rule of thumb, guys, and I've had to learn this more and more by me playing the game. Do not put a Thieves Gloves on a backline unit, except for like a two-star four cost, like a Kaisa or something like that, right? Because more often than not, these Thieves Gloves roll tank items or like front row items. And you're better off just having it on a frontline unit. Like I would have been better off putting this Thieves Gloves here on Sejuani. So that way if I don't want it on Sejuani anymore, I can sell her. Whereas now we have a 19% chance to get this Malzahar back. And I'm stuck with it being on him the whole game. So just something to think about. You know, I learn by me making mistakes. That's how all of you are going to learn. And these videos are meant to help, like, uh, shorten your guys' learning curve, basically, right? So we know 3-5, you're supposed to be around level 7. Or 4-1 is when people go level 7, typically. We go level 8 around 4 or 5. And at this point, I'm not sure what comp I want to play. I know with the Void Emblem, I do want to try to go for the Baron. But if I don't get it, man, I'm not going to force and just throw away my whole games here. Now since we're on level 8, we're going to roll down here. I really want to see if I can hit the Kaisa. That's really what I care about getting. And one thing I realized, if we're just talking about consistency, we got to think about our win con here, right? Like, what, like, what's our win con for this game? And in this case, our win con is we could roll on level 8 all day. And in my opinion, guys, I'm not as lucky as some other people. I am not the type of person to find uh, Belveth on 8. Or it does not happen to me. I do not find 2 star 4 costs. So in terms of this, I'm just going level 9 from here. I have 75 HP. I have 50 gold interest with a 3 win streak. I might as well just go fast 9. If I lose, I gain more XP from my first tier 1 augment. So it's not that bad. 
roughly you have to think about um if i were to lose every combat all the way to the end each combat i'm going to lose around 10 hp so that's how you're going to think about it so we have six lives of just straight losses We also need a Rek'Sai, and we haven't found him. We haven't found her, technically. We haven't found her yet. So that's what we're looking for. In my opinion, the only really good Rise portal is the one from Shirima that summons up, like, the gold NATO that hits the whole back line and gives you treasure. It's the only one that's good. I had the Zaun one game for the Rise Portal, and I had like 200 gold, and it, yeah, it did spawn more portals, but for having 200 gold to funnel into one unit's ability and you're still just not outright winning, it feels kind of trash to me. And at this point, I might just all into level 9, and the reason why is I only need one Belveth, and then we stabilize super hard. The, the power spike from 6 Rift to 8 Rift, or 8 Void, my bad is like catastrophically large it, it's too big to just not try to hail mary for it and what do you know we hit it on the first try and at this point we just want to make belveth items because Belveth is giga busted. She's probably the strongest five cost of this set right now. Just with the, just with her reset mechanic, if you put an Ionia spatula on her, if you just get three carry items on her, she kind of just auto wins you the game. And another thing I think people get baited by, and I think I'm gonna stop doing it, having watched these videos over and over, is I actually think. You do not go for the Heimerdinger with the double shred with the Grievous on it. It is giga busted, but the issue is, is for a two-star Heimer, that's 15 gold, and it's 18 gold on top of all the upgrades. It starts becoming just too much of a sink when you'd be better off just having, what, 15 gold for a one two-star five cost to get another two-star five cost out there. And I don't know, because I haven't paid attention to much of it, what is the correct positioning for Baron. I've seen a lot of people when they play Baron is like second row her. And I don't know if that's correct or not, because when Baron spawns, she knocks up whoever's right in front of her. So I don't know if it's better to have her second row or to use her as a CC bot on the first thing. And here's another thing we can't sell we can't sell the um kaisa here to put the rage blade on belveth because we are not guaranteed to get a kaisa back this was right before the patch i believe when duelist was incredibly broken so the odds of me to ever find kaisa was like second to none At this point, I know I can't really find any other upgrades. So my whole game plan here is because I'm able to go level 10 as I plan on going level 10. 
We're just going to use the lesser Nico just to get the gold, not to break gold interest to hold on to a 5 cost. And I do think fighting this multicaster unit, I think I should have second rowed my Baron and not valued the knockup. I think I should have second row uh, second rowed the Baron and allowed Scion to get off his ulti and his passive to where, um, you know, he can CC a bit. And Baron still gets off her chomp and all that other stuff. Because her abilities are wicked, like, broken. And I made the mistake here, guys, of stacking my Elveth on top of, like, other units. I never should have done this. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So I fought the fought, so I fought the Ghost, and I thought for sure, like, that positioning's fine to win against that person in combat. And then you'll see here in a second how your boy got, you know, just jabated. See, so I did second row the Baron. And this is like a pretty max cap board, guys. I don't know how else... Besides me getting rid of one of these units and putting Heimerdinger out on the board to get the turret, I don't know what else I could have done from this point to max out the board more. Besides maybe having like a 3 star Rek'Sai or something. But the issue was I literally didn't find any throughout the entire game. And here I made a big mistake. I sold the Yasuo thinking that if I could um, get the... I thought for sure that the upgrades on the Heimerdinger turret would be better than having the Yasuo. Because I was like, how much of this challenger are we really using, right? And I made a mistake here. I should have also moved my Cho'Gath to the back line and zephyr And abused the Zephyr on like the team or something because he never moved it. But you live and you learn, this is how I threw a really high rule game that I should have never have lost. So it goes to show you guys that you have to, you know, try your best to the end and actually think and position the best you can. Alright, have a good day guys.